Hello, this is Dr. Do again. This video is um, outside of medicine. Continue with reading the Iliad by Homer. I'm going to continue to read it. Time and again I heard your claims in Father's house, boasting how you and your alone of all the immortals rescued the Zeus, the lord of the dark storm cloud, from ignominious stark defeat. That day the Olympus, the Olympians tried to chain him down. Hera, Poseidon, Lord of the Sea, and Pallas Athena, you rushed to Zeus. Dear goddess, broke those chains, quickly ordered the hundred hundred to steep Olympus. That monster whom the immortals call Briarius, but every mortal calls the sea god's son. Argeon, though he's stronger than his father, down he sat, flanking Cronus' son, Gaganio, in the glory of it all. And the blessed gods were struck with terror then. They stopped shackling Zeus. Remind him of that. Now go and sit beside him, grasping his knees, pursued him, somehow to help the, the Trojan cause, to pin the Achaeans back against their ships, trap them around the bay and mow them down, so all can reap the benefits of their king. So even mighty Atreus can see how mad he was to disgrace Achilles, the best of the Achaeans. And Thetis answered, burst into tears. Oh, my son, my sorrow, why did I ever bear you? And Ibal was, uh, was doomed. Would to God you could linger by your ships without a grave in the world, without a torment. Doomed to a short life, you have so little time, and not only short now, but filled with heartbreak too. More than all other men alive, doomed twice over. Ah, to a cruel fate I bore you in our halls. Still, I shall go to Olympus, crowned with snow, and repeat your prayer to Zeus, who loves the lightning. Perhaps he will be persuaded. But you, my child, stay here by the fast ships. Rage on at the Achaeans. Just keep clear of every foray in the fighting. Only yesterday Zeus went off to the ocean river to feast with the Ethiopians, loyal, lorded men. And all the gods went with him. But in twelve days, and the father returns to Olympus, then for your sake, up I go to the bronze floor, the royal house of Zeus, I will grasp his knees, I think I'll win his over, him over. With that vow, his mother went away and let him there alone, his heart inflamed for the sashed and lovely girl that wrenched away from him against his will. Meanwhile, Odysseus drew up in close to Christ's island, bearing a splendid sacrifice in the vessel's hold, and once they had entered the harbor deep in base, they furled and stowed the sail in the black ship. ship. They lowered the mast by the four stays, smoothly, quickly let it down on the forked mast crutch, and rowed her into a mooring under oars. Out went the bow-stoned cables, cables fast astern, and the crew themselves swung out in the breaking surf, leading out the sacrifice for the archer god Apollo, and out of the deep sea ship crisis stepped to. Then tactful Odysseus led her up to the altar, placing her in her loving father's arms, and said, Crisis, 
The Lord of Man, Agamemnon, sent me here to bring your daughter back and to perform a sacrifice, a grand sacrifice to Apollo, for all Achaeans' sake, so we can appease the God who's loosed such grief and torment on the Achaeans. With those words, he left her in Christ's arms, and the priest embraced the child he loved. Exultant, at once the man arranged the sacrifice for Apollo. Making the cattle ring his well-built altar, then they rinsed their hands and took up barley. Rising among them, Christ stretched his arm to the sky and prayed in a high resounding voice, Hear me, Apollo, God of the silver bow, who strides the walls of Christ, and Sela, sacrosanct, Lord in power of Tenedos. If you honored me last time and heard my prayer and rained destruction down on all Achilles' ranks, now bring my prayer to pass once more. Now at last, drive this killing plague from the armies of Achaea. His prayer went up, and Phobos, Apollo, heard him. And soon as the man had prayed and flung the barley, first they lifted back the heads of the victims, slit their throats, skinned them, and carved away the meat from the thigh bones and wrapped them in fat, double folded, sliced it clean and topped with stripes of flesh. And the old man burned this over dried slit, split wood, over the quarters poured out glistening wine, while young man at his side held five pronged forks. Once they had burned the bones and tasted the organs, they cut the rest into pieces, pierced them with spits, roasted them to a turn, and pulled them off the fire, and the work done. The feast laid out, they ate well, and no man's hunger lacked a share of the banquet. When they had put aside desire for food and drink, the young man brimmed the mixing bowls, with wine and taping first drop for the god in every cup, they poured the full rounds for all, and all day long they appeared, they appeased the god with song, raising a ringing hymn to the distant archer god who drives away the plague. Those young Achaeans warriors singing out his power, and Apollo listened his great heart warm with joy. I'm going to stop here today and continue tomorrow. Thank you for watching.